Greetings, this is August 24th at 2 p.m. I am happy to report that there has been no new fire activity as displayed on infrared in the last 12 hours. I'd like to revisit the Landsat photos from August 22nd uh, because they were so clear, there was no cloud cover, and we were able to get a pretty good detail on the ground and we'll be using the EO browser and the link is below. I'm going to enhance the images slightly uh, just to bring in some contrast and brightness because the original images were from 7.01 p.m. and they were a little dark. But first I'd like to say that I'm seeing a lot of evidence that the wildfire crews have done an incredible job holding back a very formidable opponent uh, with adversarial winds, high temperatures, and, and just an amazing amount of fuel on the ground. And when I consider the terrain, the size of the area, uh, it's astonishing that they've been able to hold this back. Let's uh, give them all the encouragement we can to stomp this thing out uh, while we have uh, some cooler weather upon us. So uh, let's now take a look at the EO browser images and I want to show you something anomalous first. We are looking at something. It appears to be either a vapor or smoke uh, flowing northwards over Bonaparte Lake. And this requires verification. So I jumped over to the Landsat image and was able to see that no there was not a duplicate or confirmation of this data. It's subjective when you're looking at images whether or not uh, we are seeing indications of fire. If you are in doubt you should go to the BC wildfire website as I did and discovered there were no fires around Bonaparte Lake. I did see that there have been two lightning strikes, one at Lone Butte and another that's at Chimney Lake and that looks like it's one hectare or over. So those are recent, they're marked with the red icon and you want to check out if there's any more data that develops for those two. Now we're going to the Google Earth KML for MODIS data. Uh, this is showing infrared heat and the red indicates the most recent new hotspots. As indicated at the start of this video, there has been no new growth in 12 hours. So I'm going to use the older screens uh, because they show the red spots much clearer and that's where the latest growth has occurred. If we zoom into the northern flank, I am noticing uh, two hotspots on Mount Jim. I'm noticing a yellow one, an older one near the north of Pressey Lake. There are also two clusters with a lot of recent infrared being displayed south of Green Lake, approximately five kilometers and eight kilometers from the southern shore. These are south of the Tin Cup Mountain and in the Marsden Lake, Hutchinson Lake area. Now we're going to take a look at the Landsat images for August 22nd and these have been brightened slightly in order to give you more detail on the surface and to help us see where these smoke plumes are coming from. We can see those plumes that were in the Marsden Lake area. We can see a lot of intensity uh, west of the Rayfield River. Uh, the North Bonaparte Road is obscured, but we can get a glimpse of Pressy Lake, and we are seeing indications of where burn patterns are in comparison with forested areas outside the perimeter. I'll put the link to this image below so that uh, you can make an examination of your particular areas of concern. Uh, we can zoom in towards the Pressy Lake area. I'm noticing some plumes to the east of the lake and south of the North Bonaparte. Also, it may appear to be one on the north side 
of the lake. There does appear to be a significant amount of green or forested areas around the perimeter of the lake and that can be sort of differentiated from uh, burn areas that seem to be encroaching. So that is visible. I am seeing some faint smoke plumes uh, towards the intersection of Little Green Lake Road and North Bonaparte Road. Uh, they're very faint and I can't identify if uh, there's a source there, but again, you can go to this EO browser and zoom in and you may be able to get a better indication. Again, you'd want to check with the TNRD in the Caribou Regional District and the BC Wildfire updates because they're getting the eyes on the ground and verification in the air. In many instances, we are looking at dots on a screen that represent heat and this is the MODIS system and it's showing us uh, activity north of Young Lake and some older activity south of Young Lake and these red indications at the top of the screen they are north of the Bonaparte Valley so those are the most recent and this again has been adjusted to include some brightness and contrast so that we get a good idea of where these plumes are coming from. Most are north of Young Lake. Uh, I'm not seeing a lot of fire indication to the northeast up towards Spectacle Lakes. I'm seeing most of it directly north of Young Lake, approximately two kilometers north. Okay, we're rolling into an image of Hyheum uh, south and uh, towards the Barricade Creek area and we are seeing these red spots that uh, were recent 12 hours ago, however there are no new developments there. And when we take a look at the Landsat photograph, we can see it's not as dramatic, however what we can't see are these smoldering patches that are showing up on infrared. So uh, the smoke plumes aren't as great as one might suspect from the infrared. However, there's a lot of latent heat in that area and some as recent as 12 hours ago. We see the plumes coming from uh, approximately 5 kilometers, 6 kilometers south of Hyheum and also about 10 kilometers directly south in what I'm pretty sure is the Brousseau region, uh, Barricade Creek. I'd also like to zoom in to the region west of Vidette. Uh, this is close to Upper Loon Lake and there's been a lot of activity in this forest area but it has been quite clear of late. It's only with these recent warmer temperatures and this southern breeze come in that a few hot spots are now appearing and they look mostly older than 24 hours. We're rolling into the radiative power scan and this is now showing where the intensity is, uh, where the most volatile areas are. We're going to zoom in to the northern flank and this radiative data is showing much of the same visual pattern as the infrared and the proximity is very similar, they're comparable and we can see some indications north of North Bonaparte Road. Each of these individual pockets is showing a lot of activity. Uh, there's a variety of temperature or radiative power indications and the outlying areas are primarily purple and blue lower in temperatures. I'd like to take one more look at the area south of Hyheum and this confirms much of the infrared data that we've seen as well as the Landsat photographic image Let's quickly jump over to Windy. We are seeing six kilometers an hour coming from the northwest. Uh, this afternoon or at around 6 p.m. we may see an increase to 14 kilometers an hour. 
uh, there should be a pitter-patter of rain falling in the region and we are looking at cooler temperatures, lower wind velocities, a lot of variation depending where you are, plateaus, ridges, gullies, valleys, and there is some consistency and hopefully a lot more cooler temperatures to work on this fire front. If you are seeing lightning out there, uh, check with the BC wildfire map because they will note any strikes that turn into an active wildfire. Let's jump over to Drive BC and the highway cams. We are looking at Big Bar, uh, puffy clouds moving. Looks primarily to the eastern direction and uh, over at Begbie, a lot of sunshine, very clear. And looking at Sheridan, I am seeing some moisture on the asphalt. So that's looking west towards Lone Butte, 93 miles. So rain, very welcome in that area. Do check out Drive BC and the Highway Cam system. It's uh, a great resource to get eyes on the ground in uh, very quick update times. So. This is still an active wildfire. We've reviewed uh, the latest Landsat satellite photographic imagery, compared that with the infrared and the radiative scans, and we want to be prepared and aware and check the bulletins in the links below. Thank you for watching. Everyone, please be safe.